TN News Center. Many thanks for joining us this 27th day of August 2017. It is exactly seven days, seven years rather, uh, since uh, the country promulgated the 2010 constitution. And of course, what is happening right now, the top story that we are following is another uh, epic edition of uh, a presidential election uh, petition at the Supreme Court of Kenya. And that is where we'll start this morning. And the latest, of course, the CJ, Chief Justice David Maraga, who is also the president of the Supreme Court of Kenya, did lead a night sitting yesterday of the pre-trial conference. And the uh, petition, the presidential petition proper, begins today at 3 p.m. We did see uh, some applications by the legal teams of the, of the parties involved in this election petition uh, making their submissions. That is what, at 2 p.m., the, the bench of seven judges of the highest court in the land will be ruling on uh, before the petition begins today at 3 p.m. That is an hour later, today and tomorrow, be, uh, before giving the, uh, the bench uh, two more days to retire and write their rulings. That is um, on Wednesday, on Tuesday and Wednesday. Let's uh, begin at uh, the Supreme Court where our senior reporter, uh, Rita Tinyana, is standing by and will be following the events for us today. Uh, beginning this afternoon, but she's there already. Um, Rita, just see if you can just bring us up to speed of what uh, is happening right now. Of course, m not much, but what do we expect this afternoon? Well, good morning to you, Ben Kitty Lee. From here, we're just outside the Supreme Court. As of yesterday, uh, the security was tight. We are seeing this this morning uh, along the city hallway, Wabella Street, as well as Taifa uh, Hall, the uh, road along Taifa Street. Uh, the roads are still closed to traffic, but pedestrians who are walking around here, many people heading to Huru Park, they are allowed to walk uh, through the areas that have been closed uh, to traffic. Here outside the Supreme Court, as you mentioned, Nothing much happened, uh, happening as, uh, apart from the security officers who are here uh, in large numbers. But as you mentioned, we are counting down to 2 p.m. when the uh, Supreme Court will be deciding, ruling on the applications uh, that were made yesterday. Two major applications. One is the application by NASA seeking to have access uh, to the IEBC servers. And the next application that a ruling will be made at 2 p.m is whether or not those who applied to be uh, enlisted as friends of the court will be allowed to do that. One of them is the Attorney General uh, Gidu Moigai. NASA is opposing uh, uh, the Attorney General being enjoined as an amicus, a friend of the court. There are also others who made that application. There is a Kuruau court. He was a uh, candidate during the August uh, polls. There is also Professor Michael Wainaina. He also wants to uh, be enjoined in the suit. But most importantly, what many are waiting to see is whether or not uh, uh, the court will rule that NASA be given access to the IEBC servers. Yesterday, last night, that was a hot issue uh, before the bench, uh, the NASA lawyers. Remember, this is a case that has attracted many lawyers, many of the top lawyers. NASA has about 16 lawyers. We have the IEBC. It has six lawyers. The IEBC is the first respondent. The second respondent, uh, who is the IEBC chairman of Fula Chebukati, has six lawyers, while the third respondent, Uhuru Kenyatta, has three lawyers, and each of them uh, being led by senior counsel. James Orengo uh, leading the NASA team. We have Paul Muite leading the team for the IEBC, and Paul Ngatia uh, leading the lawyers representing Uhuru Kenyatta. So this afternoon, we'll be able uh, to know whether the court will make that ruling. Uh, Paul Muite had opposed uh, uh, NASA being given access to the server, saying it would take at least three weeks. Uh, James Orengo had uh, argued that it would take about two days to do so, so we'll wait this afternoon to see uh, what happens. And when the hearing formally begins at 3 p.m., NASA, uh, the petitioner, Raila Odinga and Kalonzo Musioka, will have six hours to argue their case. After that, uh, the respondents will have uh, four hours uh, to also reply to that, meaning effectively that after the six hours uh, by NASA, another four hours uh, by the IEBC, the other respondents, another four hours, that is eight hours, and the NASA team will have another hour to respond uh, to the arguments by the respondents. As you mentioned, they are effectively that should see 
the session end sometime tomorrow or early Tuesday morning. Here we are counting down to that start. Yesterday before uh, the advocates uh, gathered at 7.30pm uh, for the session, there was a stalemate between the advocates. They had met uh, uh, in their own session to try and uh, discuss the issues uh, that want to be determined here. 28 issues NASA had mentioned in that uh, meeting with the advocates. The advocates among the petitioner and the petitioners. And we understand that this morning they will be here before uh, 2 p.m. at another uh, session amongst them who don't know what exactly they will be uh, discussing before then they can meet with the judges uh, at 2 uh, p.m. for that ruling. Right now also here in the city, the NASA principals are attending a service at the All Saints Cathedral. We are not sure whether they'll be giving a statement after that, but we are waiting and watching out for that. Ben. All right, thank you, Rita. We will be, of course, keeping an eye on what uh, you are up to. We'll be coming to you uh, to tell us what's happening there. Rita Tinia there at the Supreme Court of Kenya, where we expect this afternoon uh, the seven-judge bench of the Supreme Court of Kenya to start the hearings proper at 3 p.m. Uh, this afternoon. Uh, we will be taking a look in the next two hours or so of some of those issues that we did see in that pre-trial conference yesterday, a night sitting led by the CJ and the president of the Supreme Court of Kenya, uh, David Justice, Chief Justice David Maraga. Uh, let me introduce my guests uh, this morning, of course, and uh, they're already here with me. Uh, Dismas Mokua, a political risk analyst, uh, Professor Oiri Tumbo, who has been a bit missing in action here on the show. Karibu sana, po. And of course, uh, Mutinda Kavemo, Jubilee strategist and uh, political analyst, uh, Hezbon Owila. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you Good so morning. much morning. for joining me this morning. Before we get into what we did here in that pre-trial conference, uh, Dismas, what is your um, maybe outlook of how this is going to see, just going by the, uh, you know, the legal teams uh, led by senior counsels, all, all of them, and their maybe uh, demeanor in that uh, pre-trial conference? Well, Ben, several things uh, stand out. That are in fact, the fact that we are at the Supreme Court uh, today is a tragedy for our democracy. Because a good election is supposed to end with the electoral body. When uh, they make a, a pronouncement, that is supposed to be a deal. It's supposed to be a wrap. Now, K Kenya is giving uh, seven judges, actually four judges, the opportunity to make uh, decisions on our democracy, which is a tragedy. Maybe it's probably the failure of IBC that they were not able to conduct uh, a poll in a manner that everybody would accept the outcome. But uh, three things which stood out uh, from uh, the pre-trial conference uh, last night is, uh, number one, Kenya is held hostage by so many lawyers. We had so many lawyers in that court, and uh, there was uh, nobody to give... Uh, or rather interested in giving uh, expert uh, advice or expert opinion. Because you could see the issue of uh, around uh, ICT trouble the judges as well as uh, the lawyers. James Orengo, Paul Muite, Ngatia, and the judges seems to me that uh, they're having uh, challenges understanding what uh, the ICT forensic audit is all about. And one would have expected uh, some bright chaps in Kenya, professionals, to actually declare their interest in becoming friends of the court so that they can uh, lead us to understand what it is a forensic audit it's all about. Whether in fact the audit can be done within uh, three hours or we need uh, three days to do that or three weeks. The second interesting thing was uh, raised by Paul Muite. Well, at least there's somebody from the ICT Society of Kenya mm. that made an application to be joined as a, a friend of the court. Yeah, but, but you know, you expected, uh, I mean, uh, to, to get those high-profile names, people come with uh, heavy every credentials uh, like Professor Tumbo. If there were four professors of, say, ICT, I don't know whether we've got professors of ICT in that court yesterday seeking to be enjoyed as friends of the court, it mm -hmm. would give you a certain level of uh, confidence. Right. The way that gentleman uh, spoke, he, was, he spoke as if he was a bit intimidated. He was under a bit of uh, pressure. And maybe even the friends of the court, we need to ask ourselves, are they friends of the court or are they friends of uh, interested parties? What interests are they representing? And then the second issue was around uh, what Paul Mwita had raised, that uh, the deputy president is not part of uh, this matter, is not part of uh, the respondents. And we all know that for a president, it's a joint ticket. A president is not one person. It's the president and uh, his running mate. So it's interesting to find out whether at some stage, or whether the technicalities will allow for the deputy president to come on board. Right. But, but, but I think the bombshell which, uh, which should disturb everybody is when at some stage uh, Paul Mwite behaved in a manner suggesting that IBC will not have a problem giving access to all the relevant forms and, uh, uh, and Mr. Ngatia requested for an adjournment to take instructions. One would expect that uh, when you're having an organization like IBC, mm -hmm. which is supposed to uh, run a free, fair, credible information, 
there should be no challenge at all in making every bit of information public. Mm -hmm. Because the IBC is a public body, the information they have is not classified as a national security asset or it's not a national security threat. So they should make all that information available. And uh, one would expect that for the communication experts retained by IBC, this is a very good opportunity for them to confirm to the entire nation that in fact they ran a free, fair, and credible election mm -hmm. by making all information available to members of the public. They should even anticipate what Jubilee would be looking for, what NASA should be looking for, what President Kenyatta would be looking for, and make that information available. Right. So that uh, for Wanjiko, the voter, will uh, appreciate the fact that, in fact, our vote counts. When IBC and uh, Mr. Ngatia start behaving in a manner suggesting that they want some information to be withheld on technicalities, then uh, that some Kenyans will start uh, smelling a rat. Right. And a number of NASA supporters are asking, if this election was free, fair, and credible, why would uh, some parties in this petition be reluctant to have all the information made public? Interesting. Prof, what, what was your initial reaction to, uh, you know, the hearing? Um, thank you. Thank you, Ben. My initial reaction was that there are many factors impacting the activities that are going on in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. First, there are those activities by the interested parties, the, the, the petitioner and the defendant. And then there are those things that are happening outside the court that are likely to, 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 to give supporters on either side a feeling that Whatever is going on, we are winning, we are losing, we are making progress, we are all sorts of things. Two, if you look very carefully, uh, what to me stood out was the fact that NASA has largely retained what you would call primary interested parties in the NASA petition. You see, Orengo was the chief agent, mm -hmm. he's, the lead, he's the lead counsel and all Kaluma and the rest as you go down. Right. They have, it's quite clear that they did not go for councils outside their core, te their core teams, which are sufficient lawyers, Amolo and Co., who are fairly established professionals. Right. It, it may also mean that people from uh, outside the core team may have had challenges, because there were rumors here and there on the streets that some of them were being uh, coerced into uh, restraining themselves from appearing. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, then there is something to worry about. I want to make a comment about what um, Dismas has mentioned. A very important thing, you say the election is free, fair, and credible. Mm -hmm. Then it, it should mean, it should translate into information about the election should be freely available, mm -hmm. all right? Should be accurate, should be reliable, all right? And it should be verifiable. Now, if the defense councils are getting water in their, in their tummies uh, when that information is requested, clearly that creates a rather uh, disturbing indicator that there is, there is a desire mm -hmm. to conceal right. some uh, primary to, information. Right. I want us to get into, into those, those, some of those applications and uh, arguments by those lawyers. But uh, Mutinda, maybe you can just uh, give us a brief uh, comment on your initial reactions to, to the pretrial conference. Yes, what came out clearly was the issue of time constraint. I, mm -hmm. I, I think that came out from both the judges and uh, the, the, the lawyers of the petitioners and even the defendants. Mm -hmm. Because everything was actually had to be compared to time. What time will you need? Is it practical considering that we have fixed timelines, constitutional fixed timelines? Mm -hmm. and, and I think going forward, that is a dialogue that probably we need to engage more in. And having watched the proceedings of 2013, mm -hmm. and again, this becomes the central issue, right. that every other issue that is raised has to be looked upon against the concern of time. There was even the issue of servants who received what at what time. As in, as in time was at the center of it. So probably so that going forward we can have more meaningful kind of uh, such serious cases, mm -hmm. we need to probably relook at the time frames that we entrenched in our constitution because that became the, the central thing, that everything had to be looked at 
you know, vis-a-vis -vis time. Because at the end of the day, there is no choice of exceeding those timelines. Right. So when you suggest anything that probably can't be done within the timelines, then uh, that uh, technically knocks out uh, the matter. So I, I thought probably that is an issue that uh, going forward, uh, we, we, we need to look at All so right. that uh, in future it is not used to as an excuse that uh, people were denied justice on the basis of time constraints. All right. Hezbon? Yeah, I, I think two things. Yeah, one was uh, senior counsel Paul Mute's concession that you know they're actually willing to avail all the the, 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 the manual documents, you know, uh, to uh, the, the, the the petitioner for purposes of perusal, you know, and and this basically tells you that uh, the fact that the other parties, you know, the respondents were not very comfortable with this. Uh, it, calls for a very interesting, you know, uh, anticipation as we wait for the ruling by the judges. And then the second thing is the way this case is going to bring on board, you know, our understanding of Article 35 of the Kenyan Constitution. Because there is the issue of access to information, mm -hmm. and then there is the way it has been turned around that, you know, access to information is allowed in the law, but access to evidence, you know, to incriminate the person giving you that information is probably bringing in a very interesting dimension. Because if you look at Article 35, it's very clear that we, we you know, as Kenyans, we have access to any kind of information that we need, so long as that information is not a threat to national security. Mm -hmm. And you look at uh, what, what IBC is all about about. I mean, this is a public institution. It doesn't have security infrastructure that would be a threat to, 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 to the nation. And, and therefore, uh, the extent to which uh, access to that information should be allowed, you know, is unequivocal. I mean, all Kenyans should have access to that information. And I like what, 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 what the court is faced with here, because if you look at what NASA is saying, is that if in 2013 we had access to this and it was manual, why is it that in 2017 we are denied access to this simply because it is not manual? So there are so many issues that are coming up, uh, and it would be very interesting. And it's also important, again, to understand that to what extent is this information, you know, uh, supposed to be uh, domiciled by IBC if mm -hmm. the interest of the public is involved. Because an election is an open thing, you know. It is not like IBC is an entity from us conducting an election and right. it is far removed from the public. The public has an interest in this. So it's, it, it would be interesting to, to, to get uh, what the judges will have to say about all that. All right, let's get in, uh, right into some of those issues. Of course, uh, the NASA team has raised a total of 28 uh, contentious issues that they want determined by the court. IBC has three, while President Kenyatta has five. Just, of course, to uh, the petitioners, of course, are Raila Odinga, the presidential candidate, and his running mate, Kalonzo Musioka, the first respondent, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, represented by a battery of lawyers uh, led by senior counsel Paul Muite, uh, Paul Nyamodi, as well as... Uh, as well as Kamau Karori. The, th the uh, second respondent is the IBC chairman, Wafula Chebukati. The third respondent is uh, Uhuru, President Uhuru Kenyatta, of course, being represented uh, by, uh, senior by uh, three lawyers led by senior counsel Fred Ngatia and Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi. Of course, there are other parties that are seeking to be enjoined as uh, friends of the courts, including or led by the Attorney General, Professor Gidu Muigai. Now, some one of the things that, uh, of course, uh, was a highlight of the pretrial conference last night at the Supreme Court is that application of prayer by uh, the NASA legal team led by Senior Counsel uh, Senator James Orengo saying that they need or they want unfettered access to the IBC service. Let's li listen into that. is together with the transactions through transmission that were done electronically, if they are brought before this court, then this court will be able to verify whether that election was transparent, credible, and accountable. My Lord, I would say that uh, the attempt to try and say that we have no time, what was this technology all about? It was for purposes of ensuring that the election is not an election on the day of election. Even after the election, a citizen under the technology rules can make an application for, 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 for information, for satisfaction whether the, the election was transparent 
and uh, Mr. Mr. Rengo. Yes. <laughs> what 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 you all council are not telling us is the time it will take. You are saying, wait a minute. So, so. You are saying yourself it will take a few hours. The other side are saying it will take even uh, three weeks. I mean, do you have an, an, an expert opinion well, 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 on this to tell us that this is a, a 30 minutes exercise? This well, is a... my, my Lord, for example, if I wanted to know uh, access to the register, all I need is to have access. I don't need that server to be brought here. Once I've been given. Yeah. Once I'm given access, I can be able to determine who are the uh, uh, registered voters in the register of voters. Similarly, 40,000 forms which are scanned and, uh, and is in the database, if I'm given access, it will not fill more than uh, 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 400 pages of just seeing the transactions. In fact, if you look at the application, we're not looking for the hardware. We are talking about logs or what was transmitted from the devices at the polling station. That cannot even contain a page. It's almost instantaneous in as much as the same information was relayed directly to the National Tallying Center, to the Constituency Tallying Center and so, and so forth. So, my lord, what we are asking for, and if you look at the application, we are not looking for the kits. We are looking for the logs. And that so that was, of course, the, one of the highlights of the pre-trial conference they are raising, uh, raised by the lead counsel on the NASA side, that is uh, Senator James Orengo, uh, wanting or uh, demanding for unfettered access to the IABC servers as well as the uh, Forms 34A and B. And of course, that was opposed by Uhuru Kenyatta's lawyers, Fred Ngatia and Ahmed Nasir Abdullah, saying those are not part of the pleadings already filed before the court dismiss. What uh, gives here? Well, uh, two things. What uh, Lawyer Rengo is asking for is not information required by NASA nor Jubilee. It's information that uh, every Kenya needs to socialize with and understand. Because there's been a lot of um, rumors, propaganda, and innuendos around uh, that server. So the average Kenyan on the street actually wants to understand this thing called server, what exactly is it? And uh, probably the, the way forward should be for the lawyers to consent to have uh, an independent forensic audit. And this forensic audit will not last for more than five hours. Having spoken to a number of uh, IC, ICT experts and uh, forensic auditors, they say it would take them less than uh, five hours. And in my view and understanding of this case, that will be the turning point in this case. Because NASA has made uh, a lot of allegations saying that the server was compromised, that there was hacking, and the hacking may have uh, compromised the quality of the election. There is no better way of resting that matter outside having a forensic audit. That's uh, the bare minimum. And uh, we, we shouldn't allow the technicalities to, be, to come in so as to sacrifice the public good. Because you know people are saying that the applications were done late, services were done late, all manner of uh, technical jargons, legal terminologies. But at the end of the day, what is the public interest in this matter? If NASA says the elections were stolen and you can get evidence from the server, and the Jubilee says the election was free, fair, and credible, as well as IBC, but you can get information from the server, what is the big deal in allowing for a forensic audit to be done so that experts who are credible can put this matter to rest once and for all? Because uh, for the NASA supporters, they say they woke up to go and cast their ballots, but uh, their vote doesn't count. While well, the Jubilee is saying... President Ru Kenyatta's legal team did argue that uh, a similar application was made in 2013 and it was rejected because it is only building a case for the party. You, you see the factor, uh, assuming that it's the case that it was uh, done in 2013, but in 2013 we didn't have a similar service. We didn't have this kind of uh, heavy technology deployed mm -hmm. for this election. Right. But assuming that it was done and it was rejecting, it was rejected rather, nothing stops this uh, bench from departing from that decision. Because at the end of the day we are looking at the public interest. Wanjiku wants to know whether the election was free, fair, and credible. So you cannot sacrifice giving us that information at the altar of uh, technicalities. All right. And all these are, all, the seven judges of the Supreme Court in uh, several rulings have indicated that technicalities must not sacrifice justice. Prof, do you think this will be the, 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 this, the basis of this, or the turning point of this uh, hearing? And is it a simple thing to just give out the service, access to the service, I think from where you sit? If it wasn't so important, 
the defense team would not have uh, more or less jumped up and down once it was suggested. It means that there is information there that they really don't want to come to the public. That's, uh, in my view, when you saw Ngaja saying, I want the one taking instructions, uh, IBC is saying, let's give them information, and they saying, oh, 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 if you give them information, mm -hmm. there are things we, we know that we don't want them to know. So, in a way, this is going to be one of the uh, critical points of discussion. For example, in my view, it is extremely important that the, the law is obeyed in, obe in availing information. Now, the people that can help the citizen, the voter like me, mm -hmm. understand the whole, the whole petition, uh, how it's, been tra it's being transacted, and how the outcome will be arrived at, will be by just availing information. One of the major failures of IBC during the conducting this election was a rather sporadic supply of usable information for purposes of understanding. When they were required to give certain information to explain certain specific actions, they didn't. When they felt comfortable to come and flood us with technical and uh, operating uh, information, they would come very loud. Right. So to answer your question, my understanding is that this is one of the, of the key points of the discussion. If, for example, the bench declines to grant that, then the, the, the petition will take a completely different direction. Mutinda, this issue was predicted to be likely to be one of the sticking points, and it has come to pass. What, what is your take on this? My, my, my take is on, uh, you know, what, what exactly did the IEBC rely mm -hmm. on to make the declaration they made on Form 34C? Right. Did they rely on the figures that were transmitted through the uh, system, or did they rely on the hard copies? Because at the end of the day, it's good to focus on the main substance of this case. It's about people expressing their will, mm -hmm. and the people voted and results were captured. Right. There is a dispute as to how they were transmitted, and that when that dispute was brought to the fore, IBC adopted the position that they are going to use the hard copies of the Form 34Bs to tally and make a declaration, and that has actually been their position. So that then leaves the question, right. what is this obsession with the servers, if at all, it is not what came through the servers that was used to declare who was the winner. That probably is how I want to look at it. And uh, I honestly do not think that, uh, un unless it is for purposes of demonstrating something else that had no effect on the final result, then the access to servers as from where I am and with the information I have about how they arrived at the winner, I, I don't think that is so central right. to actually determining whether this election was free and fair. The issue should be about Forms 34As and Forms 34Bs. Are there clear discrepancies? Are there forgeries? Are there alterations? Is there any vote that was added unfairly? Mm -hmm. Is there any vote that was reduced unfairly? Because at the end of the day, it is those ad copies right. that were used to make the tally that was used by the IBC in Form 34C to declare His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta the president. Husband, what Mutinda is saying is what was being said by the president's uh, lawyer or lead, lead counsel, Fred Ngatia, <laughs> that uh, NASA should rely on forms 34A and B that were signed by the agents on the field. Yeah, and I think that is what, what IBC had volunteered. I, the IBC lawyer had volunteered to avail, and, and they again did not assent to that. They had to go and consult, and we are still waiting for the ruling. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a bit tricky to want to avail one thing and, uh, you know, uh, not avail the other, yet the two of them go together. Because when you look at, at what, what NASA is asking for, uh, I don't think it's so much about what is in Form 34 A's and B as it is about the timings of the transmission and the gaps they are in. Because uh, from one of the affidavits that was filled by their agent, it's, mm -hmm. it's raising issues of 
some of these results were actually transmitted before even voting, before counting was done, you see. And I think there is a sense in which they want to establish that. And uh, just to agree with uh, my fellow panelists, I think the clincher for both sides of, of, of this case will be anchored on the ruling on access to the servers. That if uh, the, the, the respondents get to argue their case so much so that uh, there is no access to that server, then for them it would be relatively, you know, a defining moment for them winning this case. But if the petitioners get access, I think uh, the other thing would be then how do they then introduce those evidence into the case? And if they get to maneuver through that, I think it would be a clincher for them. I, w I was just uh, wondering, these uh, manual forms that uh, IBC is talking about, the question as a layman I would want answered is, were they available at the time the, the announcement was made mm -hmm. so that they would form the basis for that announcement? To make an announcement, then begin looking for forms and bind them and, and put them together, I find, I find that by itself deceitful. All right. All right, let's, let's, let's of course, uh, let, let's listen in to the arguments that were being uh, brought forward by the legal teams of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, as well as the President Uru Kenyatta's uh, legal team concerning that application by NASA uh, to have unfettered access to the IBC servers. Trying to get, uh, we're trying to get uh, those arguments by uh, lawyers Fred Angatia and Paul Muite on what they thought about uh, that access to the uh, to the to the, to the IBC servers. But let's let's focus on another issue as we wait on that. Um, this is the second issue that was on the preliminary applications that filed by those by the NASA and Jubilee uh, to to strike out some of the documents. The lawyers could not agree. Uh, to a proposal by the Chief Justice uh, for them to withdraw the applications and concentrate on the main petition. Issa Mansour, IBC uh, lawyer, uh, did argue that the application to have some affidavits filed by NASA be struck out, uh, giving that uh, reason of time that they were filed outside that uh, time uh, limit uh, as, as given by law. This must, uh, what is your take on this? Is it very important to the case? Well, you know, the, the, the way the, the Supreme Court had given the regulations and best practices on how to file, on how to serve, how to do all these things. But looking at the weight of uh, this case and mm -hmm. uh, the level of information, you realize the NASA gave about 25,000 pages of uh, evidence and stuff like that. But at, at the end of the day, the common man in Kenya, or Wanjiku, is not interested in uh, the technicalities. And the Supreme Court has their discretion. They can give a waiver and give a direction. And in the interest of uh, the nation Kenya as a going concerned, the judges probably ought to give the lawyers the opportunities to get a consent. But if they're not willing to give a consent on their own motion, as we saw last night, then the judges need to make a ruling that serves the public interest. And the public interest here is any piece of information, any piece of evidence, anything in, in this world called Kenya that but can assist... But public interest is, is, is different from what's happening in a court of law. I mean, some of this, the evidence has to be admissible in as much as uh, the Kenyans need to know what happened. Yeah, yeah, it needs to be admissible. But you see, this court is sitting not because they want to sit on a Saturday evening or a Sunday morning, but they're serving the public interest. When Jiko has got a valid expectation of being able to know who actually won this election. Mm -hmm. So if there's a bit of information which, uh, because of technicality, it can be knocked out, and then uh, they make a ruling in the absence of that information, then that would be a sad day for justice in Kenya. And, uh, you know, all over the world, before you take a decision, you need all necessary information which would guide you into making a decision. Uh, and some of those applications, especially by INSA, it's, uh, those are technicalities. And why would anybody, that's uh, both NASA and Jubilee, be afraid of uh, getting additional information which may assist in the decision-making process? Is that something that they're hiding? I think all NASA, Jubilee, IBC, they should open all their closets so that we are able to see all those uh, skeletons. This uh, matter is, uh, is, uh, is way beyond uh, the, the laws as required. Mm -hmm. It's way beyond politics. It's uh, because of life and death. The 50% of Kenyans who believe 
Jubilee won in a very fair manner. Another 50% who believe their votes were stolen. The only way we can heal as a nation and accept and uh, move on is for all the information to be made public. So that if Raila Odinga lost and he insists that uh, he won, his voters will actually appreciate that in as much as we woke up early in the morning on the 8th of August to go and cast our ballots, right. the majority of Kenyans decided otherwise. That's the only way we can heal the nation. So a slight issue of technicality where the judges have got uh, discretion to give away forward should not bother anybody. But what bothered, what bothered yesterday, and uh, you saw Justice Mwilu making a very strong ruling, is the reluctance of uh, the, 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 the lawyers to mm -hmm. begin proceedings today. Because right. one of the lawyers said, OK, wait a minute. On Sunday, you can send us an email, and then we begin this matter proper Monday and uh, Tuesday. Why are they, these uh, lawyers, both for Jubilee, for NASA, and IBC, reluctant to go to the meet of the day? So at this stage, one needs to applaud Justice Mwilu for being uh, very firm and saying, because you don't want us to begin in good time, we are going to give you directions. Tomorrow we begin at uh, 3 p.m. Because all of them, everybody's complaining about time, and yet they don't want to begin on time. Right. Is that something that uh, they know <laughs> that we do not know? Uh, Prof, do you agree with, with, uh, with, with, uh, with this must that uh, public interest should take uh, center stage? But should that public interest uh, be an excuse for a weak case by any side? Um... I don't know where you arrived at uh, this issue of uh, public interest and a weak case. For us, for me, <laughs> I, I am operating at the point of just availability of information. Right. Now, from a purely procedural... Like, for example, if I file something late that is not within law, just because it's public interest, does that give me an excuse to... No, how... no. Public interest does not allow you to violate court procedures. All right? <laughs> That doesn't make the, the information weak. It simply shows that you are not able. Right. All of us do things with the specific deadlines. So if, the, if, if the, the, the Jubilee team is saying that certain information was filed after time, clearly they are entitled. All right? Now, and if, even and if it is true it was filed after time, clearly it should not be accepted. Mm -hmm. There is an interesting aspect that I experienced myself, uh, a situation whereby there seems to have been, I was in a traffic jam, all right? Mm -hmm. And I saw several a blue number GK vehicles in the lanes along Uhuru Highway, all right? At the time, NASA was trying to get their documents to court. Mm -hmm. I was asking uh, my colleague in the vehicle, it looks like these guys are going to a meeting somewhere. There seem to be so many on the road at this time going in this direction. Do they, are they actually going somewhere? You have four lanes, and all of them are occupied by GKs. To me, it suggested that they were creating a traffic jam. And this, to me, is similar or could be implied to mean that every effort was made to obstruct NASA from filing their documents in time. And the aspect of technicalities, technicalities are a common uh, approach in almost any endeavor, not, not only in law. For if you have a weak case, you use technicalities to knock out your opponent. Right. That is my inference from my observation. Whether it's valid or not is another matter. <laughs> All right. Mutinda? You know, at the end of the day, the Supreme Court has got rules, and the rules are known to everybody. And uh, at the end of the day, it is the rules that will... And even those rules have leeways for the judges to also <laughs> make certain decisions. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's really going to be upon the judges to decide. Because if you notice, I think all sides have got issues to do with late savings and late receivings, <laughs> such that if the, ju the, the, the judges decide to make a ruling in a certain way in any of those applications, then it will have to cut across board so that such that if they decide that anybody who filed or served anything beyond the deadline is to be knocked off, then it will have to affect all sides from what I had yesterday. Mm -hmm. Because all seemed to have a ground to argue against something that was done outside there. The timeline. So I, I think at the end of the day, that matter is going to be decided based on the rules guiding hearings at the Supreme Court and the, the, the leeway that the judges will decide to give in some of those 
matters probably in the in the interest of of justice. Mostly in, in court, it is the interest of justice. It is assumed that justice is in public interest. So when we are in court, <laughs> we mostly want to talk of in the interest of justice and. Uh, uh, not necessarily, it, it's not about popularity in court. It's, it's about the evidence that has been presented and uh, you, they make a decision based on that mm -hmm. and in the interests of justice. Hezbon, the, the issue of those applications late uh, that uh, different councils won't struck out because of those technicalities versus the CJ telling them, look, concentrate on the main petition. What do you think? Uh, well, I think from where I see it, it's a bit obvious that it's not so much about the applications as it is about the applications that they will have. Because as a petitioner, when you file uh, the pleadings, you're giving the respondent an opportunity to respond to those pleadings. Therefore, any other application that is coming that is perceived to be expanding what the respondent has to respond to midstream when the case has already started, uh, you know, technically puts the respondent in a very precarious position in terms of disadvantaging them in providing that evidential burden. And I think that is the bone of contention. But just like uh, Kavemba here is saying, I mean, it is the discretion of the judges, of course, within the confines of the law, to now look for justifications to either allow or uh, dismiss all these applications. And it's, it's a bit interesting that both parties have issues with the applications because of time. And therefore, if you allow one party, then it goes without saying that chances are even the other party will be allowed. And if they are both dismissed, they'll both be dismissed. And, and, and coming back to what Disma is saying, again, that would present a very interesting situation because you're looking at an election and, and uh, what it means to the uh, Wanjiku down there who goes to vote. Because what we are looking for is to get all the information that will help us understand that President Uhuru Kenyatta won fairly and squarely, and the election was free, fair, and credible. So much so that if that is the ruling that is made with all these applications and evidence, no one complains. And if they are all admitted, and again, a ruling is made that tells us something that is contrary, it is only important that everything is on the table, nothing is knocked out on technicality, mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, we have a belief in the electoral process and a belief in IBC, which is basically what we want going forward. All right. So, so as we wind up on this issue, uh, Issa Mansour did uh, say that this will not be left they will not uh, leave this alone, that they will insist that these matters, these issues be struck out. And of, of course, he was uh, referring to affidavits by lawyers L. L. Edgar Ouko, Norman Magaya, Olga Karani, and Omar Yusuf, that they say it, uh, were filed out of time and were introducing new issues. And uh, uh, Orengo did say that uh, these uh, affidavits contained a bombshell. Aoko's affidavit is said to contain the assertion that the IBC's documents were forgeries and the barcodes on them were from restaurants, the World Health Organization, micro, micro drivers, and other entities. So it means this must, this could be very key evidence for NASA team. But why would you file it out of time if it's that important to your case? Uh, my, my understanding, and when I saw the, the, the two lawyers arguing, is that in the process of them putting together their case, their evidence, they came across another source of information which they want to incorporate. And this information is not uh, fundamentally new, but it's only to buttress the existing case. And uh, without the benefit of being uh, a member of the bar, the right. two bars, mm -hmm. there is a merit in uh, admitting that information. Because you uh, you are doing your investigations, you want to prosecute a case, and then a fellow comes from across the road saying, excuse me, sir, can I buttress your case? I've got additional information. So I don't know why Issa Mansour should be worried of the additional information. In my understanding, he should be very delighted to get the information as soon as possible so that he can go and uh, prepare his uh, defense. And uh, th th this Supreme Court uh, case must be allowed to proceed, but we must not sacrifice relevant information simply because of uh, technicalities. So those lawyers probably are well advised to have a cup of tea this morning and consent. By the time uh, they, they, they reconvene in the afternoon, they've agreed to flood us with the uh, information. What they need to do is just to give us so much information mm -hmm. that every single Kenyan now can take a, a decision. So that you... Because what, what Esbon has indicated is uh, critical. That uh, when uh, the Supreme Court makes a, a ruling, Every person goes home knowing this thing, the, the ruling was anchored and it was made in the interest of justice. You don't want to give 
anybody an excuse after the Supreme Court has made a ruling to say that our victory has been sacrificed because of uh, technicalities. You don't want to give uh, either Rai Lodinga or President Kenyatta a reason to call for mass action, civil disobedience, or any other thing by saying, I went to the Supreme Court and they've denied me justice simply because of a technicality where the judges have got a, a discretion. Like you recall in the 2013 uh, petition, uh, court says that we had a bundle of evidence which was uh, not admissible because of technicality. We need uh, to sort out this Supreme case matter that every person goes home happy. If you've won, you go celebrate. If you've lost, you go celebrate that you've actually lost and you'll not uh, engage the country in any time all. We should run away from giving Ray Lodinga or President Kenyatta an excuse for them to say that uh, this uh, Supreme Court was not, uh, the, the ruling was not anchored in justice. All right. Yes, yes, Prof. Yes, there are some aspects of these requests mm -hmm. that are feasible. Others are possible, but they're not feasible. In other words, if, for example, NASA asks for uh, time and they say they can do it, let's say, in three hours, let's say, from accessing the, 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 the servers. Now, I don't know whether it's allowed in law, but the truth is give them the three hours let them get what they can get from there. After three hours, if they haven't got it, shut it down. And so that they are satisfied that they had access to the server. But if you deny them blanket, it suggests that there is information that is damaging to, to the protagonists and it's being concealed. All right. Two, this, this issue about time, this one I share with Kavemba. Now, there were timelines, timelines. If timelines are provided for and agreed as uh, guiding what is going on in the court, then we, both parties must obey those timelines. As far as I'm concerned, the bottom line is none of the two parties should be disadvantaged as because of a technicality. They should be disadvantaged on the force of their arguments in terms of following the rules that govern elections. All right. These are all applications or issues before the seven judges of the Supreme Court. They will be ruling on them at exactly 2 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, NASA with 28 issues, Uru Kenyatta with three issues, uh, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission with two issues uh, to, for, the IBC, for the Supreme Court judges to rule on. When we return, we shall talk about some of the other issues, including an application by uh, various uh, bodies or institutions to be enjoined in this uh, lawsuit, this case, as friends of the court led by the Attorney General, Professor Gidho Mwegai, two uh, former presidential candidates, the Law Society of Kenya as well, the, as well as the ICT Society of Kenya. We'll take a look at this next. This is KTN News.